when the bridegroom is taken away, then they will fast in that day. Well, I got news for you. We're in that day. We're in the day when we're supposed to fast and fast often, which means it just becomes part of what we do. Welcome to the Society's Midweek Webcast. We're beginning a series here on fasting. This should continue for several weeks in which we will cover methodically the best that we can, biblical reasons why you should fast, and the physical and spiritual benefits that you will receive by fasting. Let's get right into this. And if you have a Bible, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6 and then let's pray holy ghost i thank you that these people are tuned in that they can listen to you listen to the words listen to the spirit as you speak to them that they may know you and that they may, may advance in the things of the kingdom of god and be blessed by you and in the earth in jesus name amen matthew chapter 6 and this is a very familiar verse of scripture verse 16 moreover when you fast. Notice he says, when you fast and not if you fast. So when would indicate uh, it's you are going to do it, not if. And when also indicates that there's a time that you would be doing. There's a when to fast and there's a when not to fast. All right? So it says, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Well, here is first thing, we indication that we get Jesus is talking about uh, giving you a reward. So one of the reasons to be fasting is to get a reward. Now, if he's saying you get a reward from fasting, um, then if you don't fast, you don't get that reward. There, there must be specific rewards to fasting. But thou, when thou fastest, uh, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which sees in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall, shall reward thee, thee the faster, openly. So now here he describes the kind of reward that it's going to be. It's going to be an open reward, openly visible, openly recognized. Fasting is a wonderful thing, and it's a wonderful thing that God's given us. And let's look a little bit more into when we're supposed to fast. And as you will find out through this series, I mean, fasting is, is all throughout the Bible. So it's got to be something. God's got something going on with fasting because he writes about it so much. Mark chapter 2, and let's look at verse 18. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? So you got the disciples of John, the disciples of Pharisees. They're looking at the disciples of Jesus at that time. And they said, uh, why aren't you guys fasting? We fast a lot, but you guys aren't fasting. Here's Jesus' answer. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Right? So who's, who's the bridegroom and then who's the children of the bride chamber? So Jesus right then was talking about himself being the bridegroom. And he says, while the bridegroom is with them, they're not supposed to fast. So they weren't fasting. Jesus was with them. Look at verse 20. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then shall they fast in those days. So the other verse of scripture said, when you fast, this is the when. This is the when when fasting is supposed to kick in, when you're supposed to fast. He said, when the bridegroom is taken away. Well, Jesus was the bridegroom, and we know that he's been taken away. Acts chapter 1, he went up, you know, on the cloud, and the angel stood there and said, why are you looking into heaven? This same Jesus. 
This same physical Jesus is going to return in the like manner that he went away. Well, he hasn't, he hasn't returned yet, so he's away. When the bridegroom is taken away, then they will fast in that day. Well, I got news for you. We're in that day. We're in the day when we're supposed to fast and fast often, which means it just becomes part of what we do. Is that making sense to you? We're now in the Holy Ghost dispensation. This will make a lot more sense as we get going on here. But Jesus is away and he sent the Holy Ghost. Now we're supposed to walk with the Holy Ghost. Well, he's a spirit. You know, in, act, in uh, Genesis, I believe, chapter 3, he says, My spirit will not always strive with man because he also is flesh. Well, the spirit and the flesh, they, they are not always in agreement. So we need to get in agreement if we're going to walk with the Holy Ghost, who is a spirit, and that's our job, walk with the Holy Ghost, who's God in the earth today, then we're going to have to spend a lot of time disciplining the flesh and fasting in order to walk with him more perfectly. Now, we're in the age, according to that verse of scripture that Jesus said, the bridegroom taken away, we're in that age when he said you would fast in that day. So there must be benefit and prosperity and uh things that you can have, open rewards that you can't have without incorporating the fast into your walk with God. And we're going to see a lot of that. So, 2 Corinthians and then chapter 3. Remember, now we're in that day. We're in the day when Jesus isn't here. Jesus is gone away and he sent the another. The another is the Holy Ghost and we walk with him. Now let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. What spirit? The Holy Ghost. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Or when you're walking with the Holy Ghost, you're going to have a, a level of freedom, a level of liberty, a level of open reward walking with the Holy Ghost in the way that he wants you to walk with him than you would if you didn't have. Verse 18, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Who's changed? We're changed. In this age of fasting, this Holy Ghost age, this time when Jesus said we would fast and have open reward through the fasting, that comes as we're changed by the Holy Ghost. I hope you're getting some of this. This is that day. This is the day Jesus was talking about that we would fast in that day. Fasting days. It's in our day. It's in our dispensation, and it's part, part of what we do. It's not all that we do. We don't just fast all the time, but we have to incorporate it if we're going to walk with the Holy Ghost like he wants us to walk with him. Are you getting this? You won't be able to walk with the Holy Ghost as effectively as you could without learning this discipline of fasting and incorporating it into your regular walk with God the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get as far as you need to go. You're not going to receive the open rewards that you need to receive. You won't be able to walk with the Holy Ghost as effectively as you could without learning the discipline of fasting. Nor will you have the open rewards like you should have. Is this making sense? I hope so. So why fasting? So that we can walk with God more effectively. I hope I'm, I'm going a lot fast here, but I'll probably review many of these things as we go on from lesson to lesson. But these things are very important uh, to have the groundwork established so you know what you're standing on. You're not just fasting because, oh, you want to lose some weight. You will lose some weight, especially if you fast long enough. But that's not necessarily the point. The first point is so that we can walk effectively with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. And number two is so we can have and experience the open rewards that we're called to experience. First Timothy chapter four and verse seven, but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise, 
exercise thyself towards God. Well, nobody's going to be able to make you fast. I can't make you fat. You got something you got to make up your mind that you're going to do yourself and you're going to exercise yourself in it. You're going to train yourself in it. You're going to discipline yourself. Remember the word disciple is part of the word discipline. You're going to disciple yourself in it. It's part of what you do. You get good at it. You can get good at fasting to where, you know, and usually I know within, within myself that first day is, you know, I can usually get through that pretty by just the force of will. But then the second day, of fasting just having water only not eating any food you get through that that second day and you just kind of get a little weak i know that i get a little bit grumpy but then you know you get off into the third day and you're you know parts of your uh, your physiology begin to just shut down all that you know all of your digestion system and all that stuff and then all of a sudden you, you you've got this energy you didn't know where it came from and one time, once I'm into the third day, I'm golden. I can go as far as I, you know, believe the Lord wants me to go. But I've learned that over an extensive period of time and a lot of trials and errors and failure and buckets of ice cream. You know, I know, I know a lot about this because I've done it. We're going to exercise ourselves, exercise thyself rather unto godliness and this word godliness is wonderful but it also means god likeness so we have the holy ghost he's like something the more you know him the more you worship him the more you'll see what he's like but we're going to exercise ourselves towards god likeness so that we can begin to be like him so that we can act like him well fasting is part of the exercise that we're able to do that helps us to be more God like now I don't mean being God people will take that out of context and go, oh you mean you you're, you're gonna be like God well we already are like God we were created in his image but we want to be more like from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord changed into his image and part of that what well, the way we do this is by fasting so why fasting so we can walk with God more effectively and for the benefits. I'm glad he didn't forget about the benefits because I like the benefits. You know, and lots of times I know with me, I have to keep the benefits before me because the benefits, I got to keep the benefits up here or because the sandwich is right here. So, you know, I got to look at the benefits more than the sandwich. We can get good at this. We can get good at walking with the Holy Ghost effectively, and we can get good at receiving the benefits that come to us from fasting. Well, how do you get good at anything? How do you get good at it? You get good at it by, number one, learning about it, studying it, right? You got to study the topic. You got to learn about it, but then you got to do it. And lots of times, you know, you can study, you can study, you can learn all you want, but until, you know, you stop eating that sandwich, you're not going to really know what it's like. I had one, one dear friend of mine, he says, uh, you know, he was afraid of fasting because he felt like, I get so hungry if I don't eat a meal, that if I skip my next meal, I might just die of hunger. That's how much hunger, that's how hunger will overtake me. I might, you know, eat the cat or anybody that comes by. You sit there chewing on a shoe. That's not the case. It, right there is somebody who does not know and has not practiced and got good at fasting because you know that after a while, well, hunger just leaves. Like I said, you know, about beyond the second day, second day, yes, second day, pushing through, not eating the sandwich, only having water, just water, water only for two days. Then by the third day, hunger just leaves. I don't even think about it anymore. It might be just a natural inclination. Isn't it time I should be eating? But I'm not really hungry. A lot of wonderful things begin to happen when you get over into that third day. And we will talk about that uh, later in the future when we do a few more of these messages. But... How do you get good at anything? By studying, by learning about it, and especially by doing it. And you'll learn more by doing it than you will even by studying about it. And we call that practice. 
right we have to practice this we talk about fasting Ooh, fasting is good fasting you get open rewards fasting helps you to walk more effectively with the holy ghost sure 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 but you gotta practice it you don't just talk about it you gotta practice it and do it and so we're talking about water fasting that's what people call it it's really just hey you can have as much water as you want and we're biblically we can see a one day water fast we can see a three day water fast we can see 10 day water fasts. we see 21 day water fasts and we even see the 40 day water fast and what does that mean that means drinking only water for 40 days or that means drinking only water for one day and that's where you should start out and then you work yourself up as you've learned these things to get up into a three days that means 24 hours without eating any food and then after the end of the 24 hours you begin to you could eat a little something right three days what does that mean that means you you stop eating and then for three full days you don't eat any more food you can drink as much water as you want and at the end of that third day then you can eat a little something and you'll you'll realize that the longer you go on the less you're going to want to just right at the end of that you know you get up to a 10-day fast uh you shouldn't just go and eat you know a large steak and potatoes or something i mean because that's just not going to sit well with you you'll need to come out of it now what i'm going to introduce is i believe that everybody everybody that means you you can do a 10 day water fast and there's reasons for this that i will explain a lot as we go ahead here but what that means is that once you get over into that spot where your body is at rest it's no longer using all of that energy to just to digest food and get work up for the next meal you're able to enter into a place called ketosis but if there's other things that go on there and then you can be there for a full seven days and the wonderful things that you'll get from that the benefits that you'll get out of that will be astounding Things will just fall off of you. Problems you thought were, were, were going to plague you for the rest of your life will just go away. You're like, where did it go? It left. It's wonderful. Bad things leave you. Open reward. You get an open reward after the fast. Not during the fast. You get it after the fast. Now, Jesus' public ministry began after a fast and what do we see here we see the holy ghost coming to jesus responding to jesus in a way that he didn't all the way up till that time until jesus fasted the holy ghost did not enter upon him or come upon him in power the bible says in luke 4 4 that jesus returned in the power of the spirit what was the power the power of the spirit came after the fast that was jesus's open reward that's what he was called to do a lot of people what hey you you're called to do things that you can't enter into because the holy ghost won't respond to you in the way you need him to until you fully fast fast the way that you're supposed to fast i hope that you heard that some of you heard it glory be to god forever so Jesus's ministry began after a fast. We can learn this. We can learn how to do it. We can learn to get better at it, better at walking with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. We can get better at reaping the benefits openly. All of these things are going to be great and beneficial for you in your life. Well, that's some of the open rewards, which include, but are not limited to, healing and health. The Bible says your health will break forth after the fast your health will break forth things that have plagued you will go away healing and health one of the open open benefits it will be openly obvious that that thing left you healing and health renewed youth some of the open rewards you will experience by fasting renewed youth and long life if your youth is renewed right you're gonna have a longer life you see because youthful people live longer what about success yeah one of the open rewards will be you will be successful you will have success you will have prosperity and wealth 
will begin to respond to you and it hasn't been yet and you're wondering why because we're in the age when they will fast in those days we're in those days this is part of what we do it's part of how we effectively walk with the holy ghost better than we have been and it's how we reap the open reward one of the open rewards success prosperity wealth yay deliverance deliverance from what deliverance from anything that binds you devils problems and protection deliverance and protection so once you're delivered you're protected from that stuff calamity accident all those things it's wonderful these things are promised and will be openly rewarded to you when you fast isn't this wonderful guidance light shining on you wisdom and favor all of these things we'll talk about them a little bit more as we go on but these things are open rewards you'll be openly rewarded with all of these things i like to say that if there's one catch-all in the bible we're talking about biblical fasting if there's one catch-all meaning it covers everything this is it Fasting, I mean, even for the sinner, hey, I mean, watch them. Sinners that fast, all of a sudden, the, you know, they start to get healed, and there's reasons for that. God designed it that way. This is God's method of deliverance. This is God's method of healing. It's not his only one, but I'm saying we're supposed to incorporate it. We'll be able to get farther than we could because there's things that are included in it, benefits that are included in it that aren't included without it. And if we want those open rewards, we've got to do it. So, if there's one catch-all this is it fasting water fasting and not just the one day fast i'm fine with that you know people say oh i skipped a meal i fasted breakfast well that's wonderful well how about breakfast lunch and dinner and go all the way into the next day that's at least a one day fast or then fast breakfast lunch dinner breakfast lunch dinner breakfast lunch dinner what would that be that would be a three day fast and drink all the water you want are you getting this and as you do it, why would I do that? Why? Because you need to. You are praying for God to deliver you from something or help you out in something and you refuse to do the thing that he told you to do or do it the way he told you to do it. And I'm here to tell you this is the answer. We're almost out of time here, but if there's one catch-all, this is it. And if you can learn the discipline of fasting, you'll be able to go on with the Holy Ghost farther than you could have before. He'll respond to you in ways that he never did before. And you'll have open rewards that you uh, haven't been experienced uh, in yet. <clears throat> this works for anyone who will learn how to work it. You mean sinners? Yeah, but I'm not necessarily just talking about sinners, am I? I'm talking about people who want to learn how to walk with the Holy Ghost, who's God in the earth today. And one of the ways that we get to learn and discipline and, um, uh, and exercise ourselves to be like him and to walk with him, because two walk together unless they be agreed, so or we have to do these things. We can get good at it. We will get good at it. You will get good at it. And then you'll be like me telling other people, oh, the benefits, the glorious benefits, open showing rewards of fasting. Let me pray for you. Holy Ghost, I thank you that these people have heard the word today and they know where their answer is and their answer lies and that they just need to begin to step forth and to experience those things that the living God has called you to and we'll all be happy and we'll all be blessed together and we will rejoice together in Jesus' name. Amen. Your God.